Welcome back to Yes, We're Here. With me today, teammate Ryan Rucco. Ryan, great to see you. We're going to talk a little NBA. And as we know, the league is about to open facilities with government approval at places that stay-at-home orders have eased. What does that tell you about the state of the game? Well, Nancy, you know, I think first and foremost, the good thing is that at least it means that, you know, we are um, seeing the league move in a positive direction, right, towards, uh, towards basketball. So um, is it the ultimate step? No, uh, that will be, you know, when we actually, you know, get to see uh, meaningful games again. Or, or is it as meaningful a step as when we see an outline of a schedule of when games will return? No, it's not quite that either. But it is, you know, the most, I'd say, concrete step of progress that we've had uh, since the season was uh, suspended back on um, March 11th. So I, I for, from my perspective, I, I think it's a great thing. Um, and I also think that the league is still showing appropriate caution uh, as they, you know, sort of open up incrementally. How concerned should we be? How concerned do you think teams are about the competitive balance issue? Yeah, that's a really good point, Nancy, because uh, obviously, you know, in certain cities uh, where case totals are significantly lower and the spread is not as rampant, um, the orders uh, and the restrictions are either, you know, not there at all or lessened uh, compared to, say, you know, where we live in the tri-state area, right? Um, where, uh, you know, if you're the Knicks or the Nets, you know, you still have uh, much more significant stay-at-home orders than you do in some other places in this country. So, um, you know, I, I think that it is significant, uh, you know, from a competitive balance standpoint, just as far as access to facilities go. But the, the thing is, like, I, I think we're all sort of understanding that not everything's going to be on the same level surface playing field that we're used to, right? The same way that we may have to compromise the amount of games or the, you know, the, the structure of a postseason or whatever it might be, we all get that there are going to be certain compromises made that if everything was normal in the way it usually is, we wouldn't have to worry about. Well, I just look at it in the same vein. Like, yes, ideally, you would have every single team going back to the practice facilities at the same exact time. However, because of the circumstances we're in, I think the benefits outweigh the negatives as far as opening up for those you can open up for and you just sort of deal with, uh, you know, the competitive balance issue it may present. And the one other thing I'd say about that, Nancy, is, you know, for, you know, those places that are opening up, they're still not allowed to have, right, group activities or, you know, their entire coaching staff there. So it, it's not as if teams will be running completely organized practices while other, you know, players have to stay at home on other teams. It's more so about just having facilities for individual work. So true, Ryan. It's very much a learn-as-we-go situation. It's going to be that way every step of the way. And with the opening, so many other questions. Again, that's to be expected. Like, how many weeks of preparation do guys need? How have they been able to maintain preparation? Yeah, those are real legitimate questions. I know uh, one of my close friends, Sue Bird, who was gearing up for the WNBA season, she talks about how, and we've had her on Yes, We're Here, um, but she talks about how uh, she has had to play on outdoor courts for the first time, and, you know, she can't even remember how long, like, you know, just because she's, you know, needed to, you know, get her shots up, and, and, um, and obviously there are a lot of players who are in that situation. Of course, you know, there are some players uh, throughout the league who either have indoor courts at their homes, uh, or you know, have access to indoor courts nearby that are not shut down and facilities they can still access. But, you know, for a lot of people, yeah, they've had to get incredibly creative with just keeping their game, you know, up to speed. And, you know, I think that, the, you know, the longer we go, you know, the you know, more necessary it is to have uh, uh, at least somewhat significant chunk of time for players to ramp back up, especially in the case of the NBA, where, you know, you might be going right into the playoffs, right? Or you're going to be just playing a handful of regular season games before you go into the playoffs. So, I mean, they were already full tilt, you know, three quarters of the way through the regular season. So I do think you're going to need, and I think the athletes will be able to give a fair gauge on exactly how much time they'll need. But I do think you'll need, you know, a few weeks just to get their bodies um, in position to play 
uh, meaningful games and perhaps like the most meaningful game playoff basketball. And the uneven play to begin with is to be expected. I don't think that should be too big a level of concern, right? No, I don't think so. I mean, because you know what, Nancy, I just feel like if you're if you're any of these leagues right now, right, like you just want to be able to get your sport back on the court or on the field or in the arena, right? Like that is the primary focus um, and being able to do so, and this goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, in case anybody thinks of skirting this, being able to do so with health and safety as the first issue in mind, right? Like you have to be able to do it in a way where you feel like health and safety is not compromised uh, or is such a minimal risk that you and your uh, constituents believe that the reward outweighs that risk. Um, and, and, uh, and then you just wanna be able to do it in a way that gives you the closest proximity to the competitive playing field uh, that you normally lay out in, in a league's landscape. And if that means it looks a little different or it's a little bit you know, more compromised than what you're used to, I think that's a fair trade uh, for you know, players and teams to make just in order to get the sport back. Let's dive into some uh, Nets talk specifically, shall we? And Sean sure. Marks, he's done several interviews lately, some lengthy ones. And of course, everyone's going to be asking about Kevin Durant and how his progress is. Where is he with regard to perhaps coming back? And you know, Sean Marks has not closed the door on us seeing KD in action this year. Yeah, he, he, he has not completely closed it, right? So, I mean, that in itself is definitely uh, an exciting headline for Nets fans. And, you know, you had you started to hear rumblings um, towards the middle of March that Durant was physically ready and back to being Kevin Durant. And I think, uh, you know, it, it just, given what had happened with Kyrie Irving with his uh, shoulder surgery, it just wouldn't have made sense for the Nets to throw Kevin back into games. However, if... Kevin is totally physically ready now and Kyrie is totally physically ready uh, and there's, you know, no more added risk of having them back in games, then I would say, yeah, why not do it? You know, um, you'd rather uh, perhaps them get a little bit of a runway into next season um, if they can get on the court. Plus, yeah, I mean, you know, they're both such dynamic players that all of a sudden what you could accomplish this year Obviously, uh, the ceiling gets pushed up, you know, through the sky if they're both on the floor. Um, I would say this, though. One thing I don't think we keep in mind often enough uh, with this period of time is, yes, all of a sudden the days and the weeks and the months have gone by since the injuries and, and during what we thought was going to be, you know, the appropriate rehab time before these players would be back. But they also have not necessarily had the same access to – you know, trainers or performance staff or facilities to be able to keep their rehab ramping up as it would have been normally. So, you know, while the time that's gone by, I do think makes it possible that these guys could be back playing. And I certainly want to keep that, you know, possibility open um, and I'm excited about it. I also think we have to throw a little cold water on it just to say it's also possible that these guys didn't have the necessary access they needed to keep their rehab on a steady incline. Yes, we are in learning mode for sure. And Sean <laughs> Marks has also said he doesn't want to put too much pressure on them with regard to having to lead the team either. He likes that to be more of a group thing, four or five guys showing the way. Yeah, and I think that kind of, you know, uh, co-aligns with the Spurs philosophy, right, where Sean comes from. And and also the culture he's tried to create here in Brooklyn. I remember, you know, one of the big things for Sean um, when Jeremy Lin was the next star. And I know Jeremy, unfortunately, did not get on the floor a ton, although he did play very well when he did uh, in Brooklyn. But I remember a big thing for Sean was, hey, like, I don't want to make every press appearance, every, you know, media appearance, every PR appearance, every community appearance, every billboard uh, every article, I don't want to make it all Jeremy. Like, we need to do this as a team. You know, when we have a billboard up of Brooklyn Nets players, I want to make sure that there's two or three guys with Jeremy when we do that. When Jeremy goes to an event, uh, because, you know, we feel like we need our highest profile, you know, Nets player there, I want to make sure there's two or three guys with Jeremy because I don't want it to be all about him. Now, obviously, Kevin Durant uh, and Kyrie Irving are stars of a completely, you know, different stratosphere than Jeremy Lin. Um, but... 
I think the point is, you know, the same that you want to sort of um, distribute the responsibility of being a spokesman for the team as much as you possibly can. There are obviously limits uh, to how much the eighth man can be a spokesman for the team versus, you know, you know, one of the top players in the league, like a Kevin Durant can or a Kyrie Irving can, but it helps everybody out including the culture, but also those individuals, if you can divvy up the responsibility to at least a certain extent. So it's baby steps, facilities are starting open. We can't assume KD is coming back, but we can enjoy the thought of it, right, Ryan? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Nancy, we're looking for as much good news as we can possibly get right now, right? I mean, we will take any little shred of uh, positive evidence out there. So just the fact that the door is slightly ajar on that is exciting and encouraging and something to look forward to and the fact that nba teams are going back to their practice facilities at least you know uh some franchises are is certainly uh some positive news as we all are just jonesing for some live sports yes jonesing indeed <laughs> thanks brian great <laughs> you visiting it, with nancy. you glad you and the family are safe see you soon thank, thank you nancy so good to see you as well